views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This show's audio was via a Skype call. Get fired up for Spirit Fire Radio with your hosts, Dorothy Riddle and Steve Kramer. Get ready to shine the light on universal spiritual principles and uncover ways that ageless wisdom can guide you in cultivating consciousness in these modern times. Bring purpose to your life through practical spirituality and add to your awareness with Spirit Fire Radio. Now, here are your hosts, Dorothy Riddle and Steve Kramer. Hello, listeners. Welcome to Spirit Fire Radio. We are so glad to have you with us. And when I say we, I mean myself, Steve Kramer, and my co-host, Dr. Dorothy Riddle. Hello, Dorothy. Hi, Steve. Glad to be here. Yes, we're going to continue this conversation. Listeners, if you've been with us for this month of February, you may already know we've been discussing the energy of will. It's been a very interesting month so far. And on today's show, we're going to talk about the destructive aspect of will energy. And that sounds almost like dark and foreboding the destructive energy of will. Uh, But actually, it's not what you think. It's going to make for a very interesting show. You know, we're constantly breaking down old forms and replacing those forms with new. Uh, Some might even say the, the sun that is melting the snow here in New England, the beautiful sun that we haven't seen in a while, is in a sense destroying this the snow but it's actually that uh you know heat does that it breaks down uh the the snow and so we're going to talk about destructive forces uh or actually the destructive aspect of the force that is will in a different way than you may be used to thinking about destruction so dorothy i thought it might be good though just to to say a few words about will energy uh, for people who might be joining us for the first time. Um, would would you care to do it, or I'm happy oh, to say go, go right ahead. Go right ahead, Steve. I think it's a great idea. Wonderful. So, you know, when we think of, of willpower, we think of, of asserting our will. So we can just feel into this idea of will that it certainly is about action in a way, Or it is about applying a force, and it doesn't necessarily mean action like running down the street. Uh, There are many ways that willpower is used, and sometimes it's as much in not doing, which we're going to talk about uh, a bit today, and which we've talked about on past shows. But what we sort of want you to keep in mind is that will energy is really omnipresent. It is everywhere. So when we decide to act, when we tap into that energy and we, in a sense, we use that energy uh, to create momentum, to to apply a force, we're tapping into an energy that is universal, that's already present, has a lot to do with this idea of intention. And so uh, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to keep rolling with that. Uh, and today talk about the ways in which it breaks things down. How about a few quotes? Did you bring some with you today? Sure, I've got two, Steve. Uh, The first is from Albert Einstein. Anyone who has never made a mistake has never tried anything new. So this is that that willingness to do something that does not work, that that, uh, uh, results, that does not result in a positive ending. And then from Gandhi, a no uttered from deepest conviction is better and greater than a yes merely uttered to please or what is worse, to avoid trouble. So that willingness to say this is not okay, to stop something, which is part of the destructive aspect of the will energy. Mm. And uh, I, I, oh, so go, go on, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I I love that you said a willingness because that word sort of can somehow slip under the radar, but yet it is the willingness to 
allow for something different that is using that will, wouldn't you say? So absolutely. In a sense, to make a mistake and be willing to try something new, the destruction there is actually saying, "Well, I'm not going to try it. I've, I've going to destroy the way I did it that time. In other words, I'm not going to do that again. It's gone. It is eliminated. It has been replaced with something new. So that's sort of I, I like. I love that uh, quote. It gives us a clue as to the sort of subtle ways in which we're talking about destructive uh, energy, destructive aspect of this energy. That's cool. right. And Steve, as you mentioned in the intro, uh, we so often think of destruction uh, as being negative. Um, it's interesting that in the Age of Wisdom, one of the definitions of evil is a form that has outlived its usefulness or a way of thinking that has outlived its usefulness. And we can think back in time to uh, so, social attitudes that, you know, that were held, you know, things like thinking that slavery was just fine, uh, that now we would say absolutely no. And being able to see that something no longer applies is no longer okay, and being able to end that is really critical. And the, just to add one other thing uh, on this point is um, if you think about our world, if you take seriously the fact that our world is an energy field, that's what the physicists tell us. Our, our, our entire universe is an energy field, and the thoughts that we put out uh, form uh, what happens or, or, or what is present in that energy field, then all of the hateful thoughts that we put out, all of the critical negative uh, uh, thoughts that we put out are there in that energy field. And one of the important things about ending is being willing to take responsibility to cleanse that energy field. And I just want to mention now, I'll probably mention it again in this show, is the School for Esoteric Studies has an initiative called the Cleansing Initiative, which is, and anybody can participate in this, and it's using meditative techniques to cleanse that uh, that astral field, that, that energy field that's there of all of these hateful thoughts. And we can do it on a personal level. Uh, I mean, we do get angry, we do uh, have negative thoughts about people, but for just one example of a discipline that I've uh, been practicing is if you so, so you have an energy field around you, and if you have the boundary of that energy field like a sh- uh, a shower of uh, loving energy that that the thoughts have to go through, then they can be transformed as they as they go through that, that anger that you have towards someone, instead of just dumping it out as a kind of a psychic pollution. Mm, nice. Yeah. I also find that there's times that if we just move forward, even with our own anger, we can find that actually, in a sense, that sometimes it serves a purpose uh, in and of itself. But it is, if we continue to grow and evolve and become aware of our emotions that we can find that they might spiral themselves up. You know, it's something we work through. We learn something about why that entered into our psyche or into our astral field. And if, if we're purposeful and if we apply our will, you know, we can move beyond that and transmute it ourselves. I find, um, I know for myself, I've noticed often if I am in a deep state of grief, uh, it's happened many times if I've lost somebody close to me, I'll be feel just uh, so hopeless really and, and, and sad and really grief stricken. And often that will transform and transmute into anger. And what I've learned over the years is that that anger is actually helping me trans mute that grief which has me feeling hopeless and and almost not even present as if 
my sense of self has been just annihilated by grief. The anger sort of helps form my sense of self again. And then I move beyond it. You know, I might move into just saying, all right, enough of the anger. I can move away from that and just feel like I have got an understanding of why this death happened or, or what have you. So in a way, it's again, this cycling and replacing and breaking down of, of as you say, so so beautifully, something that is no longer of use. You know, the anger is no longer of use. I've seen, uh, I've seen beyond it and moved beyond it. And again, uh, just just to reiterate that idea of thought forms that have to be broken down. These these ideas, these illusions that no longer serve. Uh, it it is an act of will to replace those with a higher vibration or with a truthful a truthful um, thought form or a you know a more elevated thought form. That's progress, right? Absolutely. And, and Steve, oh, I, I think it it may be helpful to give our listeners uh, right at the beginning of the show some practical examples of uh, of this process of the importance of ending and creating the possibility of a new beginning. I think of three of them. Uh, one, for anybody that gardens, you know that if you don't uh, do some pruning back, if you don't uh, do some preparation of the soil, if you don't remove weeds, uh, there are a number of things that you need to do to prepare for new growth. Another example is uh, you know, in our eating, that if we take in food which we need and that's all we do we just take it in we just take it in take it in we will ultimately uh get very ill we can actually die if we are not also eliminating in other words if, if we're not getting rid of the uh, the waste products that are that are created from our digestive system and then one other is just the breath. We've talked about you know breathing before, but if you breathe in and you don't breathe out, you will poison yourself. You will die. Uh, so that cycle of taking in the new and then releasing to prepare for another cycle of new. Yes, beautiful. Uh, and we see it all around us, really. I mean, uh, it seems that all of life itself is this bleeping in and bleeping out. It is coming and going. The seasons, which are constantly coming and going and renewing leaves on a tree. And as you say, the breath, even the cells in our body, the atoms, they say every seven years, you've replaced every single atom in your body. Uh, so constantly uh, letting go and allowing and, and not holding on to and allowing that breaking down so that we can bring in the new I find the, it interesting, though, to say that our thoughts are not so easy to do that with. You know, we we often think the same thoughts again and again and again. They say we ninety seven percent of our thoughts are thoughts we've we've been thinking regularly on a regular basis that we recycle again the exact same thoughts. And if you think about depression or addiction or anxiety, stress. They really are these thoughts that we come back to again and again and again. And to move beyond something like addiction or depression, you can feel into how it would take willpower to replace those thoughts uh, about life, about yourself that are holding you down or that are generating uh, negative emotion or keeping you in the same habitual patterns. So sometimes we've got to break down something like a response to a situation or the um, habit of going for a drink or whatever, you know, might be something you might uh, consider uh, an addiction in your life that you can see how it takes willpower uh, to move away from that. So certainly good things in that regard to allow to uh, break down and and be gone. Dorothy, we're we're at our first break, so listeners, uh, we will be back after these words. Tune in to 
The Truth is Funny with Colette Steffen each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit the Truth is funny.com. What if your body and mind were the compasses to the secrets, mysteries, and magic of life? Glenna Rice, co-host of The Questionable Parent, is inviting you to access all that is possible. Glenna is a 10-year certified veteran access consciousness facilitator who offers an amazing variety of life-changing classes and workshops. Work with Glenna from anywhere with teleclasses and workshops all over the globe. To learn more and see Glenna's current schedule of events, classes, and workshops, visit GlennaRice.com. Welcome back, listeners. Great to be with you today. Before we continue the conversation on uh, the destructive aspect of will energy, uh, Dorothy and I would love to share a bit about our nonprofits. Both of us represent are here as representatives of uh, educational nonprofits, and we are together in collaboration in creating a Spirit Fire Radio. So, uh, Dorothy, would you like to say a few words about the School for Esoteric Studies? Yes, thanks, Steve. So the the School for Esoteric Studies provides training for persons who have a spiritual practice that they want to deepen, Uh, and we do that through meditation, study, and service. Uh, But we also have uh, other group initiatives or group uh, projects. I mentioned one already, which is the cleansing initiative, which anyone is welcome to join us. And you can find out more information on our website at esotericstudies.net. Um, we also have uh, a uh, purposeful uh, collaboration process with other like-minded organizations, and we're thrilled to be in collaboration with Spirit Fire in creating this, this uh, radio program. We also, uh, la- those of you who were with us last month know that we uh, the school has a whole initiative on inclusive social action, which Steve is actually quite related to the topic of this month as well, because it's the use of the and this uh, particular week, it's the use of of willpower to say no, this is not okay, uh, no more, enough is enough, that kind of thing. When uh, we see harm being done individually or or on a societal level and finding ways to do that in compassionately uh, so that it doesn't escalate the violence but also does not make us complicit by silence if we don't say anything, if we don't stand up and be counted. So please uh, look at the various initiatives we have underway at esotericstudies.net and get in touch with us if any of these are of interest to you. Beautiful. Thank you for that, Dorothy. And Spirit Fire is an educational nonprofit as well. We are dedicated to educating people on the importance of spirituality and uh, ways in which they can apply that spirituality, make it practical, and use it in their everyday lives. Uh, we've got our own meditation practice called the Practice of Living Awareness. It is one primary way in which we do that. It's an online meditation practice, totally free. Uh, it's a program, actually, 14-week program with new meditations every week for 14 weeks. We just began a round not too long ago, so you can find out more about that and uh, join us online meditating or join us at our meditation center in Western Massachusetts. Our website also has links to uh, various classes and programs also uh, created by Spiritfire. Beautiful, spiritfire.com, in case I didn't mention that. Yes. Uh, Dorothy, so let's let's continue the conversation. You said there was a few words you wanted to say uh, in relation to endings. Uh, we went to a break yes. 
where you could get those in? <laughs> well, I, I think you know, anybody who has uh, been conscious of an ending, whether it's a change in your personal life, a change in your work life, uh, a, a physical move, uh, knows that what comes along with that change is a new need for new categories, new ways of thinking about uh, or organizing the ways in which uh, we think about our lives. And to me, Steve, one of the really important aspects of embracing the uh, endings as positive is to uh, learn to see newness as exciting and adventurous. You know, that uh, what we've had is great. It lays a foundation for the next stage. But then the next stage brings with us new possibilities. And in order to actualize those new possibilities, we have to be willing to let go of the old. Mm, non-attachment. It is a huge theme in so many spiritual traditions, and there is a reason for that, right? I mean, it, Absolutely. it, is, it is a practice that always brings it brings growth. Uh, and just as you were saying, you can't hold on to your breath. A clue is right there, a very big clue. Uh, there's so much to learn about the breath. But also, I, I, I think in that the universe is expanding. I often think, what if we lived in a universe that was on its exhale and not its inhale? You know, perhaps that's the way it goes. And for from our perspective in time, space, reality, you know, this re really is just a blip of an experience for us. But we just so happen to be here at this time in this space where the universe is expanding. And I think that's another big clue. Uh, you know, the population is growing. There is always room for more, for newness. There is space that's being created. So just as you said, it's seeing this newness and new forms as exciting and 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 a sense of wonder you know i think being wondrous about um newness really helps us let go of the old in realizing that it's actually just creating space for more mm -hmm. well and i think it can be helpful also to think about the different ways in which uh, destructive uh, will energy or the use of will energy to create uh, endings uh, occurs. The, I think we've mentioned on this program the concept of the rays, the different aspects or different types of energy in the universe. And many people associate will energy only with what's called ray one, which is the ray of, of power. Uh, and it certainly does play an important role in the whole dynamic of setting limits or eliminating barriers. But it's not the. But each ray has its own role to play, if you will, in uh, endings, in uh, destroying the old, so that we can move on to the new. So I thought it might be interesting, Steve, to to talk about each of the other rays in terms of that aspect. And maybe you'd like to kick that off uh, with talking about Ray 2, the love wisdom energy. Sure. I would be happy to. I have, uh, I, I, have quite a bit of that energy in my makeup, <laughs> meaning the way in which I express in the world, world that energy tends to uh, move through me quite often. Just listeners, if this concept of the seven rays is uh, new to you, we on the first week of the show of, of this month of the shows on Will, we talked a bit about the seven rays, but just one sentence to say, Seven is a very uh, is a very auspicious number. It seems that if you break any one thing down in terms of energetics, you can break it down into seven distinct qualities or seven distinctions from the whole. If you think about it, seven days to a week. But really, um, the two biggies I would say are there are seven colors to the spectrum. When you break white light down into its various vibrational qualities, there are seven distinct qualities. There are seven colors to the rainbow. And the same with sound. There are seven notes to the octave. So that's sound and vision. That's particle and wave. So in the universe, there are seven qualities of energy that express. And every single thing in this in this universe manifests and subtle not subtle, all really has one of these seven qualities to it. So as we talk about destruction, we can apply those 
raise those various qualities of ways in which destructive energy is present uh, in this universe. So I hope that makes it a little bit clear. Um, the first we've we've been talking about all along is is this this will which has to do with initiating, and then the second ray has got to do with relationship. It's love, wisdom. It is really magnetic. So if you think you put an intention out there, is that initiating, then cooperative components are magnetized, are drawn in together to form a relationship. And it's all part of this process of manifesting. So that second ray is really this energy of magnetic bonds. It's what comes together in relationship. And what does that relationship in and of itself express? That's where wisdom comes from. Understanding relationship. Wis great wisdom is understanding the minutia of relationship. And so the ways in which the second ray uses destructive energy is to release that magnetic, magnetic. hold so that it no longer has that attraction to hold that relationship in place. I think of that song by Sting, I think it was in the 80s, if you, if you love somebody, set them free, where he says, free, free, set them free. This idea of setting somebody free for their own growth, now that's using love in terms of, uh, in terms of sentimental or romantic love, which is not the kind of love we're talking about with Ray 2, but it is an aspect there. It is to release the magnetic bond that holds things together. Death itself is actually a second ray use. It is, re it is of destruction. It is releasing the magnetic bond that actually holds our atoms together, holds our consciousness to this form that is the body. By releasing that magnetic bond, we are let go of this form. And so I hope that helps with uh, the ray too. Well, let me pick up, uh, thanks, Steve. Let me pick up with Ray 3, which is the other uh, of the, the trilogy of, of uh, major rays of aspect. So uh, Ray 3 is known as active intelligence. It's that curious mind that, that you know, exploring all of the different uh, uh, ways of being, ways of knowing. And so in, from a destructive perspective, uh, Ray 3 expresses as the repulsion of non-truths. So Ray 3 itself seeks out the truth and then it repulses non-truths, almost like if you take a, a magnet and you try to put two ends together uh, that will f force apart that are, that, uh, that are similar and they, they, they try to move away. And so we can think of this in terms of uh, what we see going on in terms of uh, fake news. There's a lot of, that's, of actual fact that's been characterized as fake news, but there is a lot that is said that is not truthful. Uh, there are many falsehoods being told in the public space in uh, the United States uh, in particular. And so that identification of uh, something as a falsehood, as a lie, that is the action of Ray 3. Oh, well said, Dorothy. <laughs> uh, listeners, we're already at a break. We're going to pick up with Ray 4 and go through all seven uh, as soon as we get back. Hi, this is Laura Richer, host of On The Verge Radio. Sometimes you hear encouraging messages like transform your life now, become empowered, create the life you crave, and it all seems overwhelming and you're not sure where to start. I'm here to tell you that self-improvement is not always fun and easy, but it is always worth it. The path to creating positive changes begins with releasing the things that have been holding you back. Then you can create a life that inspires you. I know this because I've done it. You can find out more about what I do by visiting my website, seattlehealinghypnosis.com. I look forward to supporting you on your journey. 
Stay juicy. Tune in to Your Juicy Love with me, Una Drake, co-hosting monthly with Dr. Pat and every second Monday at 12 p.m. on Transformation Talk Radio. My show, Your Juicy Love, helps you find the dynamic, life-affirming love you've always wanted. Transform your relationships and bring peace, joy, and juicy, juicy love to planet Earth. For more information, visit unadrake.com. Welcome back, listeners, to Spirit Fire Radio. Just before the break, we were going through the various rays of the seven rays and talking about forms of destructive energy as they're qualified by these rays. So we're on the fourth ray. The fourth ray is actually is called the ray of harmony through chaos. What's interesting about the fourth ray is it's in the middle. If you think of the number seven, number four is right in the middle with three on either side. And it is the ray of bridging. It is the It builds the bridge between two sides. So the destructive ways in which uh, the fourth ray would qualify that energy is that it destroys that which will limit. So that which will not allow that connection we could see it as destroying boundaries that would work against universal principles for instance of interconnectivity or interdependence so where we see somebody drawing a line for instance building a wall (laughs) we think of the wall that's being built on the uh on the that that is uh that is in being spoke of being built on the Mexican US border it would be the fourth ray that would come up against that that those notions of separation and want to bring bridge both sides create a bridging energy and destroy that energy that would be putting up boundaries that would work against that harmony or against that sense of interconnection okay so race 5 which is known as concrete knowledge or scientific knowledge so it's the the more practical aspect of that ray three active intelligence energy uh, the uh, the destructive use of that energy is uh, what we can think of as purification purification with fire uh, being able to replace um, outmoded thoughts uh, with new truths and creating a new order and we can think of this in terms of uh, you know in the physical world uh, those of you who live in forested areas uh, know that uh, one of the ways of maintaining a healthy forest is through controlled burns that's actually uh, lightning plays a role in that often uh, to clear out debris so that uh, so that the forest remains healthy uh, but this is also, uh, if we think of you know, what you were referring to earlier, Steve, uh, in terms of how we deal with thoughts, negative thoughts, it's the practice of replacing those negative thoughts. The image that I think of is if you have a pail of dirty water and you pour in clean water, you keep pouring it in, um, and sooner or later you just have clean water. Well, if I continually when I start to think a negative thought, when if I have a more constructive thought that I replace it with every single time, as I practice that, after a while, that becomes my default instead of the old uh, uh, way of thinking that wasn't serving me. Mm, nice, nice. Moving on to the sixth ray, which is the ray of idealism. And this expresses as the killing of desire. 
And one has to watch out for this form because it can be quite uh, destructive in and of itself in that desire is uh, a very potent force in and of itself. So uh, it's an, in a sense like fighting fire with fire, just using that term on, on my head from the fifth ray. But I think of, of the movie Footloose, for instance, where there's a town that wants to stop dancing. Because the kids are uh, are it, it's going to lead to bad behavior, and it's this you can it can sometimes get a little bit righteous, sort of taking the easy way out. But the sixth ray uh, will come in to destroy desire, to uh, eliminate that form uh of of uh of wanting on the physical plane so i think of uh i think of a of a bit of destruction through ideal righteousness um dorothy would you want to add anything on that on the sixth ray well i think the the, the sixth ray is uh you talked about the idealism it's also that that devotional energy that uh if inappropriately focused uh, means that you are attached to something without without questioning right no matter what this is what it is and that the uh the destructive aspect that comes in is breaking that that attachment to the ideal to the uh, you know that this is the only way of being and instead opening up to the fact that there are many ways of being in the world. Mm, well said. Yeah, that that's giving it a, a much more of a positive spin than my <laughs> than than I was doing there. Thanks for that. That was a good save. <laughs> <laughs> and then we come to ray 7, which is known as the the ray of ceremonial order and ritual and it's really uh you know, when we think of it from the destructive aspect, it is the uh, the prerequisite for realignment or reorganization. So it uh, you know it says this is uh, this no longer serves uh, as we were talking about in the first segment. Uh, this is no longer useful to us. And we have to clear the way in order to bring in new forms, new rituals, uh, new uh, ways of uh, of structuring our lives going forward. Nice, nice. Very good. Well, uh, that was helpful. That was very interesting. Um, I, I find it interesting that the, the seventh ray um, will actually bring form uh, as a way of sort of destroying this this quality of unmanifest of sort of of potentiality and bringing it into the form, and whereas something like the fifth ray is actually returning it to that field of potentiality. So very interesting to look at ways in which uh, destruction uh, is expressed as a way to bring in the new. Beautiful. Well, and, uh, you know, as we continue with this discussion, I think it's really important to keep in mind that unless we are willing to choose the way in which things end or transition, the ending will be forced upon us. It's not possible to live in this world without endings. Uh, and so we have a choice. We can participate in defining when and how that will happen, or we can have it happen to us. And so much of that is actually having an idea or a vision for what will come in. Mm -hmm. Right? What that, will... That's how we can shepherd it, yes. Yes, and what will be replaced, indeed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, one of the dangers, of course, at that point is that again, we can get fixated on the idea that there's only one right way. And the, you know, if you, if you look at a health, what I would consider a healthy society, 
It's a society that recognizes that there are many, many ways of being. And I just want to add on a personal note, Steve, I feel personally grateful for my early uh, upbringing because uh, we started out, I was born in the United States, then we went to China, then we left China as refugees, we went to India, uh, and in India I got to know people from you know, many different uh, backgrounds, many different faith traditions. And so by the time I was a young adolescent, it was, for me, impossible to say that there is one, only one right way to live a life because I had met so many people, so many interesting and impressive people with very different belief systems and very different ways of doing their life each of which worked really well for them. And wow. so it's that openness to the possibility that, that you know, as we end, that there are many possibilities for going forward. So I just want to, you know, put that note in there that it's not a matter of ending in order to then pursue the one right path. It's yeah. to open up to possibilities. And we've talked before on this show Steve, about the fact that we live in a probabilistic universe, not a cause and effect universe. And that's what the, the physicists have shown us. And so we need to be open to a wide range of possibilities. Freedom, right? To me, that's just mm -hmm. expressing freedom is that uh, ability to let go, to lighten the load, you know, because certainly we'll fill up again. <laughs> it's inevitable. It always happens. Uh, Dorothy, we are, we're at a break already. Um, listeners, when we come back, uh, Dorothy has uh, put together a really wonderful piece on the stages of uh, the destructive use of will. So I hope we can get through that on the next, uh, on the next segment. We'll be right back and uh, take a look at that. Are you ready to start winning at the game of life? Lynn Brown, host of Get Into It, Winning at the Game of Life, is here to help you reach places and goals that you never thought possible. Lynn is an intuitive healer with a specialized background in financial healing. She combines her intuitive nature and her wholesome approach to financial planning. To learn more about her financial planning services, contact her personally at letter R, letter U, Intuit.com. Ignite your inner magic on Grow Your Soul Radio with Jane Matanga. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio as host Jane Matanga explores how to overcome your fears to help you gain the inspiration you need to awaken your path to joy. Learn the way to life mastery and the enlightened path with Grow Your Soul Radio. For more information on Jane Matanga and her work, visit enlightened-path.com. Welcome back, listeners. Uh, I'd love to just dive right in. I've been privy to some wonderful notes uh, from Dorothy on on the stages in the destructive use of will. And Dorothy, I believe this is quite a, related to what you were talking about uh, in inclusive social action. And and these stages are are really uh, well thought out. I'm wondering if we could just dive right in, or if you'd like to say sure. a word about it before we before we go. Uh, no, I think what I'd like to do, Steve, is I'd like to name the five stages so that we have those, and then we can go back and discuss each of them uh, based on the amount of time that we have. How does Perfect. that sound? Sounds great. Okay. So the first, the first stage always, you know, when you are setting out, is to determine the, the type of goal to be achieved. Um, and th that means, you know, what what is in that process? We have to define what is the cause 
that we're going to be addressing, not just the symptom, but the cause. So we'll come back to that. So you determine the nature, then you have to identify the resources that you have available to achieve that goal. And so that depends on, you know, what type of solution we're looking for. Uh, and it, you know, it, it includes not only our own resources, but how we work with others in that process. And then once we know what we want to achieve, at least generally, and the resources, then what method will we use? And I'd like to come back to this one in particular because there are some very specific methods that we can use. And then once we've chosen the method that's most appropriate, then we would implement that strategy. And then the fifth, which is to me the stage that is often overlooked, is we have to stabilize the results. You can't just go through a change process and expect everything to bubble along just fine, because the without attention, uh, without pr- conscious practice, we will automatically revert to older habits. And so there has to be a period of stabilization to make sure that the change has really taken hold, if you will. It's like the roots are deep enough that we can move forward on that. Does that make sense? Cool. That makes great sense. And Dorothy, what I really love about this is as we're talking about the rays, you can really see how clearly the one, two, and three are 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 working through uh, these stages in, in that the first stage of determining the nature of the goal to be achieved is really saying, well, what's my intention here, right? Like, what do I want to achieve? What's my intention? That's very much the first aspect of initiating. And then identifying the resources that are available to achieve that goal is really very much the second way. What are the cooperative components that can come together to help achieve this? What can I bring into my circle? What can I magnetize in to make this happen? And then I sort of see selecting the method to be used and implementing the strategy a bit of that third ray, which is really about what's the activity of it? How does it play out into the grand scheme of things? So there's a real one, two, three working here, which always means it's going to manifest well, that those are the primary qualities of all of manifestation, which is that intention, the relationship of what's going to come together, and then the momentum created by that. So beautiful. Mm -hmm. And if we come, we uh, think about the methods that we can use. One of the most common methods used is visualizing what it is uh, that we want to have happen. You know, uh, and th- one of the keys at this point is to visualize in a way that does not eliminate other possibilities. So we can, uh, the the method that I was uh, introduced to uh, years ago that has really stood me in good stead is to treat for right action. So in other words, instead of saying, this is how I'm going to do it, what I say is, may the best possibility manifest. Uh, so it's it's linking into the common good instead of saying, you know, I have the answers, or what I want is what will work in my self-interest, uh, is saying, no, what it is that will work best for the whole, that's what it is that I want to have uh, happen. And it may be that what we, what we need to do in the way of protection is a shielding of persons or groups that are, uh, that are being harmed that we create a protective wall uh, energetically around them to, uh, to make sure that that's okay. So you can visualize the, the end result or you can focus on removing the barriers to that. So it, you know, removing the, uh, the toxicity that's feeding in, the fake news, right? the, the fake beliefs, uh, the inaccuracies that are feeding in, or the actual energy source that is coming in, and I would 
I would just like to comment here. We, we talked about this last month, Steve, when we talked about inclusive social action. Um, people need to remember that ener- that we, we all we exist in this field of energy and we use the energy that's available to us. And when someone has a positive intention and is working for the common good and we send energy to them, that's wonderful. It fuels uh, their moving forward in a way that is positive for all of us. We also need to keep in mind that there are people that do not have good intentions that are just fine with harming others as long as it boosts uh, their own uh, sense of of pride. Uh, And if we send energy to them, they're just going to use that energy to be more destructive. So sending energy is uh, is not the answer all the time. Sometimes what we have to do is to stop sending energy, to cut off the energy source so that uh, the person cannot move forward. Then we have sound. Uh, you mentioned that before. The, you know, uh, the, the, the vibrational power of sound, and that's where the affirmations, you know, how we, the thoughts that we form, the words that we say come in uh, so, so importantly. And then we have the dynamic of fire, or what's called the thought. Uh, and this is the energy of uh, carterizing or breaking, breaking up, pruning back, at, literally cleansing an energy field, uh, not just stopping an energy source, but then cleansing the field that is there. Nice. Uh- so much of of what you were saying, I kept coming back to this, the importance of really maintaining alignment with the goal. You know, it, it's when we were talking about inclusive social action that really always coming back to this word inclusivity, inclusivity in that this is really what it becomes the magnetic, uh, this attractive word of power that then guides you and holds you, you know, intact. And it's almost when you say about sending energy, somehow I I can sense into holding such pristine alignment with the goodness, you know, of the goal that it works as a way to dismantle or destroy that which is opposed to it just because it's a higher oscillator of vibration. I think a lot of the Me Too movement, uh, which is we're seeing the results of that. Um, and even I, I, a vision came to mind of the uh, the uh, congresswoman wearing white at the State of the Union and what a powerful, uh, just a powerful image that was to see that we're starting to have a balance of power in terms of gender, that what's coming around is the goal, you know, is to bring about equality. And so, um, you know, in in using uh, these methods, you can see uh, where it is so important to stay aligned to the goal so that as everything starts to follow suit, um, it's that alignment that helps break down the paradigms that aren't working. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to also say a few words about stabilizing the results because that's, I yes. think, where things can go sideways. You know, we have yes. really good intentions. We get something started. Um, in my own life, what I have noticed is a cycle of three. That if you think of something like a New Year's resolution that if there's a personal change that I initiate, it goes pretty well for a while, and then I uh, revert to the old way of being. And if I can then restart, revert, if I do that three times, the third time it usually takes hold and it's permanent. But I have to be patient with myself. I have to recognize that it won't necessarily take hold the first time. And that uh, that we have to have time for the whole energy field, the whole you know, everything that's associated with the change to actually occur and actually uh, be the new reality. And not moving on so quickly to to the next thing. But yes, third time's the charm, right? That it goes around 
uh, three times and you can feel it's almost like a root system that's penetrating deep to create that stability. Mm -hmm. Nice. Dorothy, we're actually at the end of the show. Um, I... That was really wonderful. I'm glad we could fit that into the last uh, segment. Um, any final words before we go? Well, I think I would just leave with people uh, that it's really rewarding as well as important to embrace endings, uh, consciously structuring the endings so that they then lay the groundwork for a new beginning. And that that's what cre that is what leads us into new possibilities. Beautiful, well said, wonderful, listeners. Next week we are going to talk about uh, the ethics of using will energy, this powerful force of the will. Dorothy, thanks so much for your wisdom, and listeners, thank you for joining us. We hope you'll be with us again next week. <sighs> Thank you for listening to Spirit Fire Radio. Tune in each Wednesday at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern for your weekly guide to purposeful living and practical spirituality. Join hosts Steve Kramer and Dorothy Riddle as they shine the light on universal spiritual principles and uncover ways that ageless wisdom can guide you in cultivating consciousness in your everyday life. Add to your awareness with Spirit Fire Radio. To learn more, visit spiritfireradio.com.